Hi folks, G3 here. Welcome to another installment of my journey to go green. Today's episode is about the EMMC issue that is known with Tesla Model S and Model X. Now this occurs on cars that were built before March 2018. Now the EMMC is the, now let me just check my uh, notes here, the embedded multimedia card, which is eight gigabytes in size normally. Now the recall um, issue has come about because there is a fault, a known fault with that car, the card that it can occur. And when it does, then, then there's a bit of a problem. And what Tesla are doing, they're not recalling the vehicles until there is a problem that's been uh, witnessed in the cars. And then they are upgrading it to a, now let me see, I think it's a 64 gigabytes. Yeah, a 64 gigabyte eMMC. Apparently, that's what it gets upgraded to. I've had some issues suddenly occur on the car, which seem to me to be related to this. So we were driving uh, on Sunday, so a couple of days back, and all of a sudden, our center console screen um, went, and it just came up with the Tesla logo whilst we were uh, driving along. We still had navigation available on our dashboard because we had maps in progress, but we couldn't see anything on the main screen. And subsequently, whenever we go on a journey now, we don't have access to the mapping because we can't get on the main screen to set that. But as we were driving along, the main screen went blank and um, I didn't notice at the time, but the enhanced um, features such as autopilot um, and lane, uh, lane change and those things, kind of things weren't available. We've had a bit more time to, to look at the things that are happening here uh, because I've had a journey, 160 mile journey to London and back uh, yesterday using the car. So it is drivable, but there are a number of things that aren't available. So let me try and think of the things which we don't have available at the moment. So I talked about the features such as the autopilot and uh, lane change. There are also uh, the reversing camera can't access because you can't see um, it on the screen. You don't have access to the heating controls, the music or any of those bits and pieces that you would otherwise access via the main screen. We also don't have sound. So when you put on the indicator, it is working, but you can't hear in the car that it's on, but you can see it on the console that it's blinking um, and it is actually working. I've double checked that is working. We can't use the screen demist and the rear screen demist. In theory, I could be able to turn that on via the app. I've been able to, I think, use the defrost function through that. I think it was working when I put it through the app, but we can't use it on screen. So we're unable to do that. We don't have access to the voice functions or changing the heating controls via the steering wheel so you've got the opportunity normally to access the heating temperature and fan speed and that sort of thing but we can't access that it's not available there's an awful lot we don't have access to we we can't see the actual use energy use at the time when charging you can't see what the setting is you can't um, set what limit you want to go to because you can't get to the charging screen and equally that isn't available via the app when I was charging because it's not getting the information back on the current state of charge in the app. When we're out and about and we've been charging and you're away from the car you have no idea as to what the charging level is so basically I can't stay away and, and check. I have to come back within a certain time, say 30 minutes, or whatever, knowing that I'm going to be roughly 60% charge at that point. So that's quite restrictive. <sighs> so it's, it's, it's annoying because Tesla know about the issue. In theory, they could be proactive and upgrade these on cars that they know it's going to be a problem with at the future. I haven't been able to schedule a quick appointment. My local repair facility, I say local, Dartford, which is um, an hour's journey for, from me, it's closed at the moment. Now, there was the possibility of getting a mobile technician to come out, but the first time that they were going to be available to come and look at it was a couple of weeks. So that wasn't ideal. The first appointment I could get was at the Gatwick facility, which is a 60 mile journey 
for me and it's probably going to be i would estimate an hour and a quarter journey to get there but they were available 10 days after i logged the issue so that was the best appointment i could get so fortunately i've got a day off uh, and i'm going to be able to go in just over a week's time to the gatwick facility to get them to look at it i haven't had any update on the service as yet from them i've sent photos that it may well be that they get in touch with me and say well actually we can do it quicker via mobile i mean hopefully that'll be the case but at the moment i'm anticipating having to drive to gatwick and get them to look at this let me um, have a look on the app my understanding is that it's going to be about an hour they're saying the car is safe to drive they're not aware of any accidents or injuries resulting from this condition no the car is drivable that is that is quite true you just don't have a lot of safety features that make it a safer thing to drive now they're saying that they need to check that the car is using software older than 2020.4812 which mine is it's 20 21 something or other so mine is definitely on the best best thing they say you may lose access to the rear view backup camera that's correct exterior turn signal lighting i do have the turn signal but you just can't hear it you don't have access to the windscreen defogging and defrosting controls that is correct okay so they're saying that it will automatically default to auto for the internal and it's going to take it to 22 degrees celsius and ensure windshield visibility now when it comes in apparently it's going to be a component change so it's going to be a 64 gigabyte card that's added um, but also a software update potentially this doesn't involve any update to the mcu at all so that will be remaining i've got version one um, not the uh, version two because it would cost 1600 pounds roughly i think to get that upgrade so i haven't gone with that i'm tight I don't think it's worth it. Okay, 75 minutes it's going to take to do the upgrade for the um, Model S. It's a little bit longer for Model X. Apparently it's 90 minutes for Model X. I thought it would be useful just to show people what does occur with it. That, um, to say, yeah, the car is still drivable, but a lot of the bits and pieces are missing. The biggest issues that I'm finding, obviously, are to do with the safety features, not having the mapping, but also the charging thing the fact that i can't get an accurate level of charging i'm not sure exactly where we are um, when it is doing the charging so that is quite inconvenient but at least i'm able to open the charging flap that's unaffected and to charge properly all of the doors and the front and the rear are opening fine there's no problem with that windows open so that's all on unaffected things that you control via the key fob or via the um, physical buttons um, they're all fine and dandy it's only things that you would be controlling via the center console buttons on the um, steering wheel that also control things that are via the um, the main console. So the, the heating controls, and that sort of thing. It is very disappointing that Tesla haven't uh, recalled this and made the update of their own accord. The car has been in a um, service area since they knew about this problem. Um, but it wasn't upgraded at that point. It seems that they're only doing the upgrade once an issue actually occurs. And I must say, I haven't had them at this point confirm that that is what the problem is and that this is um, to do with the EMMC uh, issue. But it seems highly likely to me that is a known issue with this car. This is what happens when that issue occurs. It's of the right age. So I fully suspect that's what the problem is. Well, there you go, folks. That's a quick video to show you what happens with the eMMC issue on Tesla Model S that is a 2015 model. So this occurs on cars before March 2018. Hope you found it useful. If you did, then please click the like button down below and leave your comments. Let me know whether you've experienced this problem and had it resolved or whether you're concerned about the fact that you've got an older car and that this might happen to you because you haven't had an automatic upgrade by Tesla. And if you haven't done so already, then why not subscribe to the channel? And click the bell icon so you get notified when I load up a new video. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Until next time, bye.